Welcome to the Nutanix Cloud Summit Video Spotlight Series. We're here with Chris Barnest, Deputy Director at DISA. Chris, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'd like to start by asking, um, based on your experience, how are federal agencies balancing the use of their data centers and on-premise centers resources and uh, versus the public cloud that, that's available to them? Sure, so, so at DISA we provide uh, 10 core data centers to the department um, and what we've seen over the last, I'll say several years is really, um, I wouldn't say a max exodus, max exodus but a, a transition away from on-prem cloud into the commercial environment. Um, from a DISA perspective, that's caused a shift um, into kind of three different areas. Um, one, uh, we want to enable access to commercial cloud. Um, so we're working to award a series of contracts for the Joint Warfighting Cloud Capability, or JWCC, uh, sometime in the next month or so. Um, that will give DoD components access to commercial cloud across a number of vendors uh, and at all classification levels, unclassified, secret, top secret, um, and include tactical edge capability. Um, so kind of a game changer for the department from the, the public or commercial perspective. Uh, the second thing we want to do is offer on-premise cloud. So we have something we call Stratus, um, which is an on-premise cloud capability in our data centers um, where you know, that might be appropriate for different use cases. Um, and then the third is hybrid cloud. Um, how do we connect it to? What are the use cases where that makes sense um, you know, in, in terms of uh, different applications and capabilities? Uh, and we want to be a cloud center of excellence, and we're, we're working to um, transition the agency um, to, to do this, um, where people can come in and we can offer best advice uh, on where you might want to land uh, and provide best value added services um, to include things we call cloud accelerators. Uh, so things like container as a service, infrastructure as code, um, where we've done all of the right DoD security checks for you, uh, but you say if you're going into an Azure environment, um, we can give you that container you can set up that environment in two to four hours instead of what normally would take uh, 40 plus days. Uh, and so we can really get you into the environment faster and leverage the capabilities that are out there. So pretty significant shift, but one that we're embracing um, and, and trying to help drive change across the department with. That is a significant shift and I wish you good luck with that as well. And then the other question for you is what do you think is perhaps the most important thing that agencies and maybe this in particular really needs to accomplish in the next two years? Yeah, so there's, there's kind of uh, three main areas I'll point to, um, and they all in some way, shape, or form um, are, are data-centric. Um, the biggest key in, in our view over the next couple of years is being able to get data um, where it needs to be, anytime, anywhere, globally. Um, and that includes from our national level leadership, president on down to deployed forces in the field. Um, and there's kind of three main things that we have to keep in mind as we do that. Um, one, we, we operate um, the third largest network in the world, right, with the DOD's backbone transport infrastructure. Um, and our challenge there is how do we embrace what the commercial sector can offer and leverage their capabilities um, to, to support DOD traffic? And how do we make sure that a user anywhere in the world, you know, whether we have a point of presence there today or not, has the ability to use any transport medium, Billsatcom, Comsatcom, um, you know, terrestrial fiber, Wi-Fi, commercial cell, whatever it might be, to access our infrastructure. Um, and so there's some initiatives that are pretty exciting underway in the agency to, to make sure that that's a capability that's out there in the next two years. Um, the second is commercial cloud. Um, so how do we leverage that infrastructure um, and the scalability it provides um, such that we can get um, large data sets, right? We can store large data sets and then again leverage that transport to get that data where it needs to be uh, in near real time. Um, and then third, how do we secure all that? Um, so uh, we talk about a, a pilot we have called Thunderdome, which is our you know, zero trust uh, architecture for the, for the department. Um, we're piloting that right now. We'll get to a fielding decision here in January um, on, on how to expand that out to more and more of the department's infrastructure. Um, but zero trust is focused on securing the data, right? Um, and so, a uh, lot going on in that space, but the combination of those three things, I think, really over the next two years is critical um, to the department's success. Well, uh, Chris Barnas, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to share some of the things going on at DISA. It sounds like an exciting year ahead, so thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.